mantras of our divine mother a divine mother says blessed what's the day when i came to know thee o ineffable eternity blessed among all days be that day when the earth at last awakened shall know thee and shall live only for thee with love and blessing says our divine mother words of our divine mother from the collective works of our divine mother volume 2 page 42 topic reflections on the path our divine mother says what value have our impulses our desires our anguish and our violence our sufferings and our struggles all these inner vicissitudes unduly dramatized by our unruly imagination what value do they have before this great this sublime and divine love bending over us from the innermost depths of our being bearing with our weaknesses rectifying our errors healing our wounds bathing our whole being with its regenerating streams and divine mother says for the inner godhead never imposes herself she neither demands nor threatens she offers and gives herself conceals and forgets herself in the heart of all beings and things she never accuses she never the judges nor curses nor condemns but works unceasingly to perfect without constraint to mend without reproach to encourage without impatience to enrich with each one with all the wealth he can receive to enrich each one with all the wealth he can receive she is the mother whose love bears fruit nourishes guards and protects counsels and consoles because she understands everything she can endure everything excuse and pardon everything hope and prepare for everything bearing everything within herself she owns nothing that does not belong to all and because she reigns over all she is the servant of all that is why all great and small who want to be kings with her and gods in her become like her not despots but survivors among their brethren how beautiful is the humble role of servant the role of all who have been revealers and heralds of the god who is within all of the divine love that animates all things says our divine mother next topic lesson of the rising sun Our Divine Mother says courage, hearken to the lesson that the rising sun brings to the earth with its first rays each morning. It is a lesson of hope, a message of solace. You who weep, who suffer and tremble, who dare not expect an end to your ills and issue to your pangs, behold, There is no night without dawn and the day is about to break when the darkness is thickest there is no mist that the sun does not dispel no cloud that it does not kill no tear that it will not dry one day no storm that is not followed by its shining triumphant bow there is no snow that it does not melt nor winter that it does not change into radiant spring a divine mother says and for you too 
There is no affliction which does not bring its measure of glory, no distress which cannot be transformed into joy, nor defeat into victory, nor downfall into a higher ascension, nor solitude into radiating center of life, nor discord into harmony. Sometimes it is a misunderstanding between two minds that compels two hearts to open to mutual communion. Lastly, there is no infinite weakness that cannot be changed into strength. And even if it is in supreme weakness that almightiness chooses to reveal itself, says our Divine Mother. Next topic, a morning concentration on gratitude. Our Divine Mother says each morning when you get up, before you begin your day with love and admiration and gratefulness, hail this great family, the saviors of mankind, who ever the same have come, come and will come until the end of time as guides and instructors as humble and marvelous servants of their brothers in order to help them to scale the steep slope of perfection. Our Divine Mother says, Thus, when you wake up, concentrate on them, your thought, full of trust and gratitude, and you will soon experience the beneficial effects of this concentration. You will feel their presence responding to your call. You will be surrounded, imbued with their light and love. Then the daily effort to understand a little better, to love a little more, to serve more, will be more fruitful and easier at the same time. The help you give to others will become more effective and your heart will be filled with an unwavering joy, says our Divine Mother. Next topic, success and failure. Our Divine Mother says to know how to renounce the satisfaction of the present moment for the sake of realizing one's ideal is the great art of those who want to make their transient, total existence yield its utmost. There are innumerable categories of successful people. These categories are determined by the greater or lesser breadth, nobility, complexity, purity and luminosity of their ideal. You may succeed as a rat picker or succeed as a master of the world or even as a perfect ascetic in all three cases, although on very different levels. It is one's more or less integral and extensive self-mastery which makes the success possible. Our Divine Mother says, on the other hand, there is only one way of being a failure that happens to the greatest, to the most sovereign intelligence, as well as to the smallest, the most limited, to all those who are unable to subordinate the sensation of the present moment to the ideal that wish to achieve, but without having the strength to take up the path, identical for all in nature, if not in extent and complexity, that leads to this achievement. Our Divine Mother says, between the extreme of an individual who has fully and perfectly realized all he had conceived and that of one who has been incapable of realizing anything at all, there is, of course, an almost unlimited range of intermediate cases. This range, says our Divine Mother, is remarkably complex because not only is there a difference in the degree of the realization of the ideal, but there is also a difference between the varied qualities of the ideal itself. There are ambitions which pursue mere personal interests, material, sentimental or intellectual, 
others which have more general, more collective or higher aims, and yet others which are superhuman so as to stay and strive to scale the peaks that open on the splendors of eternal truth, eternal consciousness and eternal peace. Her Divine Mother says it is easy to understand that the power of one's effort and renunciation must be commensurate with the breadth and height of the goal one has chosen. At any level from the most modest to the most transcendent, one rarely finds a perfect balance between the sums of self-control, the power of sacrifice available to the individual who has chosen a goal, and the sum of renunciations of every kind and nature which the goal requires. When the constitution of an individual permits, this perfect balance is our Divine Mother. When the constitution of the individual permits this perfect balance, then his earthly existence yields its utmost possible result. Our Divine Mother says everything belongs to all and to say or think this is mine is to create a separation, a division which does not exist in reality. A Divine Mother says everything belongs to all, even the substance of which we are made, a will of atoms in the mature moment, which momentarily constitutes our organism without abiding in it and which tomorrow will form another. Those who say this idea is mine and who think they are very charitable in allowing others to profit from it are senseless. The world of ideas belongs to all. Intellectual force is a universal force. Our Divine Mother says we are like channels. If we do not allow what they have received to pour out freely, not only they do become blocked, and no longer receive anything, but what they contain will spoil. If on the contrary we allow all this flood of vital, intellectual and spiritual forces to flow abandonedly, if by impersonalizing ourselves we know how to connect our little individuality to the great universal current, what we give will be returned to us hundredfold, says our Divine Mother. Next topic, Remembrances. Our Divine Mother says we are fond of remembrances because they already belong to the Universal. They already belong to the Universal. They bear in themselves something of the sap of infinite you. That which in the daily events has been perceived by the exterior sensitiveness, egoistic and limited, the sensitiveness which suffers and rejoices vanishes rapidly as a cloud of illusions. But behind that ignorant perception, often veiled by it, lies the other, the perception of the real soul which communes through all things with the universal soul and enjoys in all its perfect bliss. 
Our Divine Mother says these perceptions are kept in the depths of your being as remembrances and when one of them emerges to the memory, it comes back dressed with the golden garb of divine felicity. What we at first called in our ignorant perception, suffering and pain reappears embellished, transformed, glorified, adorned with the same dress of magnificence as that which we had called pleasure and happiness. Indeed, sometimes the splendor of the former memories even more is even more intense, vast than that of the later, the joy they give us much more profound and pure. So, little by little we learn to distinguish between the reality of things and the false interpretation of our blind senses. That is why remembrances are such precious teachers. That is why we are so fond of remembrances. By them we come in touch with the eternity. Next topic, to know how to suffer. Our Divine Mother says, if at any time a deep sorrow, a searing doubt or an intense pain overwhelms you and drives you to despair, there is an ineffable way to regain calm and peace. Our Divine Mother says, in the depths of our being, there shines a light whose brilliance is equaled only by its purity. A light, a living and conscious portion of a universal Godhead who animates, nourishes and illumines matter, a powerful and unfailing guide for those who are willing to heed His law, a helper full of solace and loving forbearance towards all who aspire to see and hear and obey Him. No sincere and lasting aspiration towards Him can be in vain. No strong and respectful trust can be disappointed, no expectation ever deceived. Our Divine Mother says suffering is not something inevitable or even desirable, but when it comes to us, how helpful it can be. Each time we feel that our heart is breaking, each time when we feel our heart is breaking, a deeper door opens within us, revealing new horizons, ever richer in hidden treasures, whose golden influx brings once more a new and intenser life to the organism on the brink of destruction. And when, by these successive descents, we reach the wheel that reveals thee as it is lifted, O Lord, who can describe the intensity of life that penetrates the whole being, the transcend radiance of the light that floods it, the sublimity of the love that transform it forever, says our Divine Mother. These are the words of our Divine Mother.